Environmental revolution. Yeah, I see what big brown. <laughs> Environment I represent. Let's be responsible. Yeah. Let's be responsible. Yeah. This is Kampala, the capital city of Uganda, the largest urban center in Uganda with an average population of 3 million, which keeps rising at a rate of 5.6 per year. Just like other urban centers around the world, people are migrating here from their rural homes with hope of finding better opportunities and services. Unlike the affluent enjoying a high standard of living, 70% of this population ends up in slum areas with its associated problems of unemployment, low household incomes and widespread poverty. This population shift has brought about adverse consequences of waste generation and improper disposal, severe on both people and the environment. Waste management services in these slums are insufficient and sometimes non-existent, leading to various environmental hazards with the resultant health implication responsible for most common causes of poor health and mortality in the urban poor. Over two tons of garbage are generated per day in Kampala, of which only 40% is collected by KCCA to the landfill site in Kitezi. This leaves the population in the slums with a lot of waste unattended to and a big problem to the communities. Senyangi of Nasana town looks at garbage differently. It is a source of income that has enabled him to look after himself and his family for two years now. By the time we started work in 2010, our operations were informal. We were using one wheelbarrow to collect the garbage. We eventually got support from Living Earth Uganda who equipped us with business development and management skills. We managed to register a company, got an office and entered into a partnership with the town council through signing an MOU. Members of Wisdom and Insight obtained knowledge during trainings offered by Living Earth Uganda, a natural resources and environmental management NGO. The training conducted under the improved living conditions in slums, public-private partnership project empowered over 40 SMEs and 300 persons from Rubaga, Kawempe, and Nansena in business development and sustainable environment management skills. The project is funded by the European Union. It's not easy to work during the rainy season. Remember, I have to hire a truck to do my work. Hiring a vehicle every day of work is quite expensive. Most of my profits go into hiring the truck. To help members cut down on the high cost of hiring a truck, Living Earth extended a seed grant which the group used to purchase its own truck. It was not easy to do business before because most of our income went into hiring the truck. But today, we are able to save some money and grow the business and pay our workers on time. Our service delivery is improving, which is leading to increased customer satisfaction. Abdul Sekamanya of Kamu Kamu Group, Makere 3 Parish, Dobby Zone, is collecting waste plastic in the area to earn some money from it. He collects an average of 700 kilograms of waste plastic per month, fetching him at least 650,000 shillings per month. Abdul took up waste plastic collection as a business after receiving training from Living Earth Uganda in 2010. The training covered effective waste plastic management and business skills attended by 50 other community members. I have got friends out of this business. My living conditions have greatly improved. My life is better than before. My income has gone up. I have opened up new enterprises and most importantly, we managed to move from this house to our new home in Kawanda. <laughs> To boost his income, he turned his former home into a grocery and a laundry business which are largely operated by his wife. The challenges are many. First is lack of transport. Secondly, there are health risks involved. And finally, the waste plastics are usually littered in very filthy places. In another project area of Kiseni Zone Bwaisa 1 Parish Kawempe Division, members of Luluna Communal Environmentalists are busy making charcoal briquettes from waste. 
The group of 70 members acquired training in bricket making from Living Afghana in July 2012. The group produces one and a half tons of briquettes a month from which they earn over one million shillings. The money earned is taken back into a credit and savings fund to help members overcome their financial needs as well as the group's overhead costs like rent, purchase of tools and machinery. We had no machines at the start. We used to mold briquettes with our bare hands. But today, we have a stick briquette machine, a medium briquette machine, and a honeycomb machine, which we received from Living Earth. The other machines made enough money, which we used to buy the crusher. That is a sign of growth. In addition, we have already placed an order for a dryer machine to prepare for the wet season. We want to continue production even during the rainy season. Certain groups of people, including women, youth, people living with HIV AIDS and with disabilities, received special interest in the project. Our Lady of Charity in Mulago is one of the groups benefiting through this arrangement. The group, made up of 50 women, brings together the unemployed, single mothers and school dropouts to get empowered with a number of skills in briquette making, compost manual making, craft making, plastic collection and sorting. We grow vegetables to supplement our diet. We grow the vegetables in soil mixed with compost manure using the knowledge given to us by living earth. We collect garbage, remove all plastic and polythene. We use garbage from peelings, leftover food, and cut grass to make compost manure. We mix the manure with the soil and put in sacks to utilize the limited available space. Top Mr. Chomohendo, together with a colleague from Our Lady of Charity, are preparing to have a meal cooked using a portable fireless cooker. Fireless cookers are a sustainable energy technology promoted by Living Earth Uganda in the project. Women in this group receive training in the production and use of fireless cookers. Fireless cookers are made from readily available materials including baskets, cotton and cloth. Cotton is stuffed in all the corners of the basket and held back onto the walls of the basket by stitching it with a cloth using a needle and a thread. Energy saving stoves are a key component in sustainable energy application. The stoves use much less fuel and hardly produce smoke, leaving kitchens healthier to work in. Based on this background, the project promoted the production and use of energy saving stoves in the project areas. Different groups receive training in the production and marketing of these stoves for sustainable energy use. Chiamanyua of Chebando Energy and Environmental Project has commercially ventured into production of energy saving stoves. My clients used to complain that charcoal briquettes break easily when they used on regular charcoal stores. As a result, Living Earth invited us for a training on production of energy-saving charcoal stores. The charcoal stove is promoted by Living Earth because it efficiently supports the use of briquettes. It's wide enough and cannot break the briquettes. Another key activity in the project is the sensitization of communities about rights to a clean and a healthy environment. Communication materials and tools are distributed to the communities carrying relevant information on sustainable environmental management. Sensitization occurs through cleanups organized by resident committees with support from Living Earth Uganda. Interestingly, some SMEs equally mobilize communities into voluntary cleanups. Enro Solutions, an enterprise offering desilting, garbage collection, and road cleaning services in Triangle Zone, Mulago 2 Parish, Kawempe Division, has today mobilized the community into a similar exercise. The group of 60 members received a seed grant to purchase tools and protection gear through the support of Living Earth. <laughs> Working conditions were unbearable. We used to work without any protection. 
no gumboots, no uniforms, and we often got bruises from broken glasses. But ever since we got the tools, we are well off. We are safe from the bruises of the broken glasses. We quickly get contracts since we've got what it takes. Our income has increased. At first we never had a bank account, but today we have one with 5 million shillings. Another seed grant was extended to Living Earth Energy Developers Cooperative, a circle formed by 20 SMEs to market and get meaningful income from the increasing production of briquettes. The cooperative lacked enough capital to construct institutional energy saving stoves in the schools. In 2014, the SACO received a seed grant to construct institutional energy saving stoves in three schools and trigger the demand of briquettes. There's this old Kampala, there's Navagirka Primary School, and then there's Chebando Primary School, which is the same. We are going to use them as a stopping stone to make sure that the whole of Uganda, actually all government schools, implement the same. We would do, use at least two trips of firewood, and each trip was uh, 500,000, totaling to one million per term. But uh, as we talk now, using the energy saving uh, stoves, we are just using a quarter of the firewood. And uh, with the briquettes, we have saved a lot because you just uh, light it once and it can burn for four hours and then stop. Although the project has ended this year in 2013, a plan to keep project information available to all the stakeholders and the general public has been put in place. On Saturday, 17th August 2013, at Lubaga Division Headquarters, the project was handed over to the community in the form of an information hub during a grand ceremony attended by a number of stakeholders. The ceremony was officiated by the Mayor of Lubaga Division, Her Lordship Joyce Ebuguao. We hope that the project's best practices and initiatives can have a lasting impact to other communities that are facing inadequate waste management in slums and that the vulnerable can get improved living conditions through adopting similar initiatives of turning waste into wealth and also be able to demand for effective environmental sanitation service delivery in the slum areas.